Well, hey guys, what's up? I'm currently here live at the B&H Depth of Field Conference about to be talking. So, that's exciting. Um, unfortunately, if you are leaving comments in the chat, I will not be able to reply to them because I'm gonna be up there, but send me an email through my website if you want to, whoismat.com. We're gonna start in like five minutes, so see you soon. Hey everybody, welcome to day two of Depth of Field to the video track. I'm Rachel Silver, I'm the founder and CEO of Love Stories TV. So we are partnering with B&H to bring a video track to this conference. So if you're not familiar with Love Stories TV, we are a platform for watching and sharing real wedding videos. So wedding filmmakers and newlywed couples from all over the world share wedding films on Love Stories TV along with all the details of the wedding. And then people planning their wedding can come and watch any type of wedding film they could ever think of to find a filmmaker, research venues, find other vendors and get ideas and inspiration for their weddings. So our mission is really to celebrate wedding filmmakers and wedding films. So we are gonna be having um, programming here all day, specifically about video, and all of yesterday's talks are actually on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash TV. So check that out. Um, my colleague Vanessa is here. If you have any questions for either of us about Love Stories TV or what we do, we would love to meet you. Um, this is Matt Johnson, and he is kicking off. <laughs> Two. We're so psyched to have him. I will let you introduce yourself, but if there's anyone equipped to give this talk and talk about wedding filmmaking, but also video generally, it's you. Congrats on your huge YouTube success, which is like growing even faster all the time. I'll let you take it from here, but another round of applause. Thank you, thank you. Okay, can you all hear me? Is the audio loud enough here? Okay, good. So I am Matt Johnson. I've been filming weddings since, oh gosh, 2010, so like eight years now. And I, in 2015, I started making educational videos, stuff like that on YouTube. And that's kind of taken off. And earlier this month, I hit 100,000 YouTube subscribers. So, yes, so excited about that. Oh my gosh. Um, this is the first time I have spoken to a audience that is not just my camera in my room since grad school in 2011. So I'm just imagining that you're all cameras and then it's okay and I don't feel weird, so that's good. Um, the title of this talk, Capturing Quality Sound Every Time. That is a good title. I did not come up with that title, just to be clear. Three days ago, got an email from B&H with a schedule, had my audio title. I knew I was talking about audio, but I'm like, ooh, this is a good title. Oh man, I sound professional. People are gonna wanna come to this thing, all right. Because when, when I think about audio, that's not necessarily the title that I would go with. When I think about audio, I think about Oprah, which that's weird, the talk show host lady. But one of my favorite episodes in her show was whenever she gave away a car to all of her contestants. This was like a big deal, it was like in the 90s, nobody's giving away cars, they don't have money. And they're like, hey, you get a car. And then she's like, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. You get a car. And like women are like weeping, like oh, my life has changed forever. And then she's like, you get a car. So, that's what I think of. And the reason that I think of that is because whenever I'm filming weddings, I want to give mics to everybody. So if I had to revise the title of this talk, it would be, you get a mic, 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 you get a mic. I'm not gonna read all these, don't worry. But it's a lot, okay? So I feel like Oprah. But I think that's important because audio redundancy whenever you're filming a wedding is one of the most important things ever. There's a one-time event, you get one shot, Redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. I'm just gonna keep on repeating this. Think of Oprah, and that's, that's all you really need to know. Today in this talk, I'm gonna be explaining all of the gear that I use. I have all this gear laid out over here. We're gonna go through it all, talk about it. So at the end, you should have a good idea of how to record audio at a wedding, or at least how to record more audio at a wedding if you're already recording some audio, hopefully. So with that, I have a chart for you that I've created that will hopefully illustrate why recording audio is important at a wedding. This is a completely original work of art that I've come up with. No one has ever had this idea before of this three triangles put together in this way. There's, it's completely original just by me. And okay, I do play Zelda a lot. Okay, so it does have something to do with it. But um, I believe that this really breaks down 
a film very well. Not just a wedding film, but any film. If you're filming any film, these are the building blocks. You have your visuals, you have your audio, and you have, or you have your visuals, your music, and your audio. And all three of these are gonna be working together to make a good film. So I feel like whenever we're starting out in filmmaking, we buy a camera, we start filming stuff, got a lens, we're like, this is so pretty, I love this, it looks so great. You have your visuals. And then you start editing, you sit down in the editing bay and you're like, oh crap, I need to put music to this thing. I need audio. So you start going for music and you're looking through and you're saying, what song do I want to use? Because the music is going to dictate the emotion of your film. That's what's going to put, push the, how the audience feels whenever they're seeing your film. So if you have a sad song, your audience is going to feel sad. If you have a happy song, your audience is going to feel happy. If you have a Tony Anderson song, your audience is going to feel epic, I guess would be the term. Some of y'all get that joke. It's not, not everybody, but that's okay. Um, but then finally, once you start off, you're kind of using visuals and music. I know for the first year I was shooting, I was just using visuals and music, kind of making like music videos for wedding films. And I was neglecting the top point, the audio, which is arguably the most important. It's at the top of the pyramid here. That's why I put it up there. Because audio is so critical. Because without audio, you don't have a story. The audio that you're using is what is going to tell the story of your day. It is what is going to connect your audience to your film. It's going to make them care about your film. And so now I have examples because everybody loves examples. So this is a wedding film that I shot back in November. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. Don't worry. But I took the first 40-ish seconds or so and I took out all of the audio. So this is just the visuals and the music and I want you to watch this and see how it sounds. So that's some people. They clearly like hiking. They like making out on cliff sides. Um, you don't know anything else about these people though at this point, clearly. So if you're watching this as a wedding filmmaker, as just an audience that's on YouTube, you're not really engaged with this. It's like, oh, that's pretty, but I know nothing about these people. If you are delivering this to the couple, of course, they're gonna see it and they're gonna be like, we love this, it's beautiful. Because anytime you give somebody a video that is of themselves, they will watch it and love it. So the bar is low there. But I still believe that the audio is what is going to show you who these people are. So here is the edit again with the audio as I edited it. Henry told Victoria very quickly, you're the kind of girl I want to marry. He also asked her shortly after that, do you see a future with us? And Victoria, and it's, this is, she'll tell you this is close enough to a quote, took his words exactly as he asked them and put them right back in his face and said, no, I do not see a future with us. That didn't stop Henry. Okay, so suddenly you're like, holy crap, who are these people? What's going on? There was clearly some drama in their relationship. She said no, suddenly they're together. What happened? Did she black out, go into a coma, forget everything? Suddenly she loves him? I don't know, maybe. No, I already edited this. It's on my YouTube channel if you want to watch it. I'm not going to make you watch all 12 minutes of it. But suddenly the audio, you're engaged. You suddenly are caring about this couple. You're interested in them. You're starting to see who they are as people. And that's really, really cool. And that only happens through the audio. So today, we're gonna be talking about two things. We're gonna be talking about the ceremony, which has these happy people, and the reception, which has toasts. Because if you can film and record good ceremony audio and good toast audio, you're pretty good 
as far as filming a wedding goes, which is good. So we're going to split up. We're going to talk about ceremony audio first, and we're going to split up into two parts. First part being house audio, meaning the soundboard that you're connecting into at a venue, anything like that. The second part is going to be all of the microphones that you bring to a wedding, all the recorders that you bring to a wedding, which is going to be its own separate monster here, believe me, but it's really great. So let's start with house audio. And house audio is what I like to call, and I made this up two days ago, uh, relationship-based audio recording, which sounds weird. But it's relationship-based because anytime you're filming a wedding at a venue, there is most likely going to be a sound guy or sound girl that's going to be working there that you're going to have to talk to and interact with. Can I plug into your soundboard, please? That's going to happen. So what Rachel and I always try to do whenever we're filming a wedding is we always try to reach out to them ahead of time. We're always talking to the couple right away at the in our first meeting with them usually, hey, are you gonna have audio at your ceremony? Who is gonna be running that? Great, can we have their contact name and their email and their phone number, every possible way to get in touch with them? And then before the wedding, week or two before, we shoot them an email, we say, hey, we're filming this wedding, we have these recorders, we have these microphones, we have these cables, we would love to plug into your sound system. And normally they say, okay, cool, yeah, you're set. And we say, thank you so much. So we show up and that is taking away a lot of the guesswork if you've filmed weddings before and you just kind of show up on the day of and you're like, oh, there's audio here. Okay, great. It's kind of terrifying. So by taking away the uncertainty, it makes it a lot easier. You're building a relationship with the sound guy or girl at the venue. So let's talk about tech now, because this is my favorite part to talk actually about the gear that I use. So whenever it comes to house audio, this is my setup. Go to, first of all, Zoom H4n. If you've been recording, honestly, if you've been making videos since 2009, I'm sure you've seen one of these things. This, that's how long I've had this guy. It's pretty ubiquitous in the world of wedding filmmaking because awesome recorder, all you really need to know about it is that it records good video. It has a good auto leveling feature so you don't have to like go over and like adjust it while the ceremony is going on. I'm like, don't kiss yet, hold on my audio as you're peeking. Like you don't have to do that because it's auto doing that for you. It saves you so much time. Other benefit of it, it has a lot of inputs on the bottom. You have XLR, you have quarter inch, you have a lot of capabilities to plug into basically any soundboard with this recorder. Also sold at B&H, so if you want to go over there and buy, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being paid by them to say that. Um, so, three cables, that's what you're going to need with this thing, that's it. 95% of soundboards will work with three cables. First of all, XLR, pretty darn ubiquitous if you've done any audio work at all. XLR, you talk to the sound guy, you plug into the XLR port, plug into the bottom of Zoom H4n, you're recording audio. If they don't have XLR, don't fear, they will most likely have quarter inch, which also incredibly ubiquitous. Extra points if you plug into both the XLR and the quarter inch outputs, that, that gets you bonus points in wedding filmmaking. So these two plug in here, same exact thing. Lastly, we're getting really creative here now. Now I'm mixing it up here. Quarter inch on one side, RCA on the other side. Really crazy here. But benefit of that is that most soundboards have a tape out area that you can plug into. That's RCA. I don't know why. It's still called tape out. Nobody's using tape anymore. I have not seen tape in a very long time. I do like saying tape though, so that's okay. Um, between these three cables and this recorder, I'm set for most ceremonies. So that is your house audio. That is covered. Also make sure you bring headphones, actually check your audio, make sure it's not just static recording. I say this from personal experience or possibly music that's being just played and you think it's the audio, but no, it's a uh, Chris Tomlin song, just being clear here. Okay, so that is house audio. Now we need to talk about the audio microphones and speakers and recorders that you are, not speakers, microphones, audios and recorders that you're going to be bringing with you to the wedding. Because as I said, I believe in redundancy, so just having this is not enough. We need to bring our own stuff to make sure in case the audio craps out, in case something breaks, you need to have backups. So first thing that I bring, where is it at? Oh, I'm wearing it. That's why. Okay. So I have this guy right here. I'm going to take it off here and take this out. Okay. Um, wait a second. Hold on. How many of you, first of all, are still using wireless audio 
when you're recording weddings. This one guy back here. Oh no, no, there's more of you. Okay. <laughs> Wireless audio is great if you are shooting corporate work. It's wonderful for that. But a wedding is not a corporate gig, of course. And the issue that you're gonna run into with wireless audio as somebody that used it for many, many years is you were just introducing another point of failure into your recording setup here. The, the argument is that, oh man, I can monitor my audio while it's recording, this is so great. What you run into though is that if you ever try to stop a wedding ceremony, like hold on, you're, you're cutting out a little bit, can you adjust your mic? You're not gonna be able to do that, it's a wedding ceremony. They're gonna get really mad at you, don't do that. So the argument of being able to monitor the audio is kind of, useless because the wedding ceremony is already happening. So if you start using recorders that do not have a wireless component, you're far safer on the wedding day. It's just another thing that could mess up. So you're removing that, which is great because we already got to worry about memory card failures, battery loss. Oh gosh, just so many things. So it's best just to remove that. All right. So what do I use then? This is my new favorite microphone recorder. I'm using it right now because I'm recording this audio for myself. But this, the Tascam DR10L. Ooh, my voice sounds good whenever I do this here. This thing, how many of you know about this? Okay, good, a lot of you do, thank God. This will change your life. Easily the most exciting audio recorder that I have ever purchased. And especially in the last year, I'm realizing I'm like really geeking out over an audio recorder, but this thing is incredible, okay? I will talk about it now and you will just listen to me ramble about how awesome it is. This thing, it has a screw-in mic input, so it's not going to come out, which is fantastic because how many times have you had something recording and then the groom's like, and then you're like, no, and so it messes up, okay? That will save you. Second thing, this thing records a negative six decibel backup track. So if you have somebody start peeking, you have your backup track and it's recording. Not to mention it has an awesome auto leveling feature and a audio limiter. So it's not gonna wanna peak anyways. It's ridiculous. Runs on AAA batteries, runs a lot most of the day. I love these things. I have four of them. I wanna buy like 10 more just to have them, just to put mics on random people, why not? It's incredible. So I love this thing, $200, buy a lot of them. It's, it's wonderful. Maybe B&H will have them on sale if we all go over there and beg. That could be really great because I'll buy more right now. Okay, um, so that's the start. And I have two of those. And I put one onto the efficient, and I put one onto the groom. Usually if the groom and the efficient are wearing tuxedos, of course, or a suit that would work with. Sometimes you have efficients that are female that are wearing dresses. Sometimes you have same-sex weddings where they're both wearing a dress. Sometimes you have same-sex weddings where they're wearing, both wearing suits. A lot of different factors there. But in general, the DR10L, you're gonna find a way to put it onto somebody. It has a clip on the back to put on a belt or something like that. But it's small enough, you can just toss it in a pocket. It's so tiny, I love it. So, I have two of those. One on the groom, one on the efficient is usually the default. Clip it on, start recording, don't worry about it, and you're set. But, backups, redundancy. We're not done yet, because some people would say I have a problem, but um, that's okay. So, as more backups for just the audio that I am using. I got this little guy, and this little guy actually. Okay, this is the Olympus DM620 voice recorder. It's like 100 bucks, you buy them at, they have some like Office Depot, honestly, you buy them on Amazon. Um, this thing is incredible. Only con is that they discontinued it. Thank you, Olympus. So I bought this guy, the Olympus WS-822. You do not need to remember any of these product names because both of these have been discontinued. I'm sorry, I have the last two in existence. It's like a sea turtle or something like that. No, no, these things, you have other options. Um, there is a Sony model, horrible name, the ICD-UX560. You don't have to remember that. Um, FYI, I have a kit page, which I will link to at the end of this talk during the Q&A, that literally lists all of this gear. So if you are like frantically writing down notes right now, like, oh, what was that again? Don't worry, it's all listed on the kit page. You can go and browse that so you're not like freaking out wondering what that is, because I don't remember all these product names. It's kind of ridiculous. but. These two audio recorders, really, really great. Records auto leveling, just like the Tascam DR10L. You don't get any backup track though. It has a microphone input. It's a, it's a voice recorder. It's nothing super glamorous, but it works. This recorder I pair with uh, this guy. 
the Microphone Madness Matchstick Lapel Mic, which that's a cool product name, I gotta say. Called a Matchstick Lapel Mic because it's super tiny. It's like the head of a matchstick. Benefit of using this microphone is that super tiny, you can put it in a lot of places, which is really great. That plugs into the DM620 voice recorder right here, and we're almost ready to go. You notice though that there's not a clip on this mic like the other one, because the clip that they make for this thing is super janky and I don't like it, so I don't use it. What I use instead is Rycoat stickies, which are amazing little double-sided sticky things. I will show you an example now. So, come on this little thing here. You peel off the paper. Ah. I'm gonna take this thing out so I can actually show this here. You stick it to the double-sided stickiness here. You peel it off on the other side. And this is now a super sticky thing that you can attach to fabric. You can attach to skin if you need to, and it'll work well. Use discretion if it's a very hairy person. Be nice to them, but works very well. So, this guy goes right in the jacket pocket, just like the dr 10 or pants pocket, or et cetera, et cetera. And I put this guy under several layers of clothing if I can. This does not just go right on top. dr 10 goes on top, and that'll usually cover me. But if you deal with a wedding that has wind or any other sort of noise that you're gonna be dealing with, by putting this under fabric, at minimum, I usually put it under the jacket so it's protected a little bit. If it's a very windy situation, I bury it deeper, not under the skin, but very deep. And that helps me record audio even if it is windy, which is wonderful. Example time again. All right, this is a wedding that I shot last year in April. And as you can see, you can already start to tell that we're gonna have some problems. Namely, you can already see the airplane up here because this couple chose to be married outside at a lovely venue that just happened to be right on the landing path of DFW International Airport. <laughs> so every 30 seconds, just jet, just screaming over. And I'm like, no. So I'm already dealing with that. It also happened to be one of the windiest days ever just in my life, which sucked. So, to work around that, I busted out all the microphones. And I have some examples now of the audio from the day. So, up first here, this is the efficient talking. This is my Zoom H4n recording into the house audio that was recording from his lapel. You can kind of see it up here by his jacket up here, the massive, ugly microphone. Over here for you over here. Okay, cool. So, this is that audio as the house recorded it. For the last 225 days, this day has consumed your life. You have planned, scheduled, organized, mailed, reserved, and invited. You had a goal. <laughs> In your marriage, you also have a goal to love each other more today than yesterday. Plan for success. I really like how bassy this speaker is. It really accentuates how rough that was. <laughs> so, if I had been just with that, I would have been in trouble. Could have tried to use it, but that was literally the entire wedding ceremony was this level of noise. So, let's now hear another option here. This is from the Tascam dr 10 that I had on the groom's lapel. So he's facing away from the wind. This is like my mental process as I'm going through my, in, in editing, I'm like, okay, this audio sucks. Is this audio okay? Well, let's see. For the last 225 days, this day has consumed your life. You have planned, scheduled, organized, mailed, reserved, and invited. You had a goal. <laughs> in your marriage, you also have a goal to love each other more today than yesterday. Plan for success. So that's arguably even worse, which is terrifying. So we go to the last option, the DM620 that I put down under multiple layers of clothing because I knew it was going to be windy. Here we go. For the last 225 days, this day has consumed your life. You have planned, scheduled, organized, mailed, reserved, and invited. You had a goal. <laughs> In your marriage, you also have a goal to love each other more today than yesterday. Plan for success. Okay, see, it's okay. I was clapping too. I was like, yes, 
good. I actually have workable audio for this wedding. I don't have to be like, can you guys get married again? Oh my gosh. So that is what saved me. This is a wedding where I put an Olympus DM620 on the groom and on the officiant. So I was able to get the audio of both the entire message of the ceremony as well as the vows and the ring exchange, which that's the audio from the wedding. So by having that all there, I was okay. But if I had not had all this redundancy, I would have been in trouble. Now, last thing about the ceremony we need to talk about here. You have noticed probably at this point that I have not been talking about miking the bride. I'm gonna go forward a slide, there we go. Um, the reason I've not been talking about miking the bride is because up until this year, we have not done that. And reasons are really two. It comes down to the groom and the bride are normally standing pretty close together during the ceremony, so you do not need to worry about necessarily picking up both of their voices. They're both gonna be pretty close, and so if you just have audio on the groom, you'll be able to record the bride as well, get, saying her vows. The other reason is that grooms usually wearing a suit. Very easy, pockets everywhere, put it on, you're set. Unless the groom is wearing a very tight fitting suit and then you can still do it, but you gotta put it up under his armpit, which I've done before. Um, for brides on the other hand, you've got different types of dresses. I know that there's strapless, backless, that, I'm looking at Rachel right now, that's, that's all I know actually about. They're all very pretty, okay? But like, I don't know dress types. But I know that every single one of them is different, and so that means you have a different miking situation for every single one of those. Thankfully, I have an option for that as well, because literally three weeks ago, we were filming a wedding in Iceland. And I don't know if you're aware of Iceland, but it's not only cold, but it is also one of the windiest countries on the planet. So take that last audio that I just showed you from the wedding in Dallas, multiply it times three, or 10, and that is Iceland. Very beautiful, love it, but it is not friendly whenever it comes to wind and audio. So we said, all right, we need to break out all the stops for this. We need to make sure that we can record high quality audio of the couple's vows and of their ring exchange. So I went out and bought, oh, this little fella. Look, it's a DR10L, but it's an icy white, which that's just cool looking, oh man. So. They make them in black, they make them in white. Same exact feature set, just different color. And this thing is incredible. So, benefit of being white, matches with wedding dress, you're good. But how do we put this on the wedding dress? Are we just like, can you just tug it right there? No, you don't wanna do that. That can get you in trouble. Um, so, we do not use that. What we have chosen to use here, and I'm gonna give a big shout out to Sarah Pendergraft of Pin Weddings because I totally stole this from her and now I'm telling all of you about it, so. Thanks to her, please go to her conference too, thank you. Okay, um, <laughs> what she recommended that I purchase is this guy. It is a Neopax thigh strap that you use for putting a microphone onto people. Velcro, it's kind of like a ugly or garter, I'll just say, but this is gonna be like really weird here. Um, this is a very educational moment here. Ugh. Straps onto the thigh, right there. Looking good. Yeah. And whenever the bride is putting on her dress, have her put this thigh strap on. Talk to her about it ahead of time. Don't spring this on her whenever she's putting on the dress. She will not be happy with you. You tell her way in advance we would like to mic you. Then, thigh strap on. Benefits of this thigh strap. It has a little pocket that is the perfect size for a DR10L. Ta-da, you can both on both sides here, so I gotta get both of y'all. So, this drops down into here, but don't just put it in there and then try to run the mic up. Wait until she's putting on her dress, it's loose, drop it down the front, then put it into the thigh strap. Also, it helps if you have a female videographer on your team that is willing to do this, because whenever I do it, it gets kind of awkward, so try to avoid that. That's why Rachel's here, it's really great. I'm not saying hire someone just to do that, but just be aware that some brides are gonna be like, yeah, that's great, just do it. And other brides are gonna be like, no. So just be aware of that. So wait until she's put on the dress, drop DR10L down the front of her dress, put it into the pocket, and then we're gonna take our right coat stickies again, just like we did with the DM620, and that is gonna go right here against the sternum. Well, depending on how the dress looks and all, of course, but for this wedding here, we had it right here on the bride's sternum, up against her dress, so you could not tell that she was wearing a mic. No one had any idea, 
but we had really high quality audio that we were able to record of her very sneakily. If she needed to do like a mob informant thing or something like that, no one would have known. It's a New York joke. Nobody's getting that. That's okay. I'm gonna be killed after this. That's all right. Um, so, example time then. This is the wedding in Iceland. Granted, we mic her, we go through all the trouble of putting all this on her, which I'm gonna take off now because this feels weird. And we get to the ceremony site and there is no wind at all. Like, it's warm outside. It's Iceland. You can see there's like icebergs here and it's warm outside. I'm like, I got my jacket off. The photographer is on the right. She's wearing short sleeves. This is insane. She was from Iceland. She was really hardcore, but still like, that gives you an idea of the temperature and there's no wind. I'm like, this is perfect. Okay, we didn't even need this. But I'm still very glad that we did it because here is audio from the groom's Tascam DR10L that we had on his lapel. Sam, as you know, adventures aren't easy. They aren't just beautiful views. They require blood, sweat, and tears, especially if you're hiking with me since it isn't a hike unless I've fallen. <laughs> <laughs> So not bad, not bad at all. That's from the groom, so you can tell that she's standing a little ways away from him, but the audio is still perfectly usable. But if I was in a windy situation, that would be kind of terrifying still. So here is the microphone that we put onto her, and you can hear how that sounds. Sam, as you know, adventures aren't easy. They aren't just beautiful views. They require blood, sweat, and tears, especially if you're hiking with me since it isn't a hike unless I've fallen. <laughs> <laughs> so good, holy crap, that sounds so awesome. So, moving forward, Rachel and I have plans to mic more brides in the future. Probably not every single wedding. Use your discretion. If it's an indoor wedding and you know the couple's gonna be standing close to each other, you're probably not gonna be dealing with much wind at that point, unless somebody's flying a drone during your ceremony, which I do not recommend doing. Um, if you are doing an outdoor wedding though, which is what we're thinking about, if we have any chance of wind, we're gonna be talking ahead of time saying, hey, how would you like to be wearing a microphone? And that works out pretty well. So, we are now done with ceremony audio. Congratulations, we're halfway. Not really, it's, the reception audio is quicker because all of this gear that I've talked about you get to use it for the reception too. I don't make you buy all new gear for the reception, so that'll help save you some money. That's good. But reception audio. There's a woman giving a toast to symbolize reception audio. Um, reception audio is also relationship-based because unlike interacting with the sound guy at a venue or at a church, you're gonna be interacting with the DJ. So get the DJ's contact info, send him an email, call him. Find out, find out what his soundboard is. Say, hey, we, are, we would love to plug into it. Here's our mics, here's our recorders, here's our cables. Do you have an output for us? Story time. Literally last week, we were filming a wedding down in Georgetown, Texas. And we emailed the, the DJ ahead of time. No response. We email him again, no response. And I'm like, okay, well, guess we're just gonna go into this wedding blind. Hopefully he has received our message and will be cool. Hopefully there will be sound at the reception and we can make this work. We walk into the reception site. I'm carrying all of my gear, so I'm like dropping it by the door. And as I walk in, I see the DJ across the room. And he's like looking straight at me. You know, like as soon as you walk in, you see somebody looking at you. And then he's waving at me and not like, hey, he's like, hey. And I'm like, what is going on? Right? And so I'm like, oh, hey. And I like turn around, and like walk back outside because I had to get more stuff. So I'm like, all right, well, this is a friendly dude. But then as I'm walking out, I see this other couple that's like kind of ahead of me into the side a little bit, and they wave at him too. And I'm like, oh no, I just waved at a guy that wasn't waving at me. Those people saw me, it's super awkward. Like, don't mind me, yeah. Now I gotta talk to this guy, it's super awkward. But go outside, get more gear, come back inside. And I'm walking up and the DJ's like, hey Matt, how's it going? And I'm like, how do you know my name? Like, I'm literally like, is this my roommate from college? He vaguely looks like him. Oh no, no, not my roommate. But he's like, hey man, I got your email. Super informative. You answered like any question I would have had. I didn't even think I needed to reply to your email. And I'm like, no, it, I would have liked if you had. <laughs> Just saying, but he didn't, so it was okay. But he's like, yeah, I've already got an audio output set up for you. Anything that you need. And I'm like, you're so nice. This is so great. Like far nicer than some weddings that I've done. I was like, like almost like creepily nice, you know, like, like overly friendly. Like, are you trying to kill me? Like, just, I don't know. So anyways, we, uh, I proceeded to grab my Zoom H4n 
and he had a RCA two quarter inch output. So plugging that into the tape out, just like at the ceremony, I was recording audio from his soundboard. And any sane person would have stopped there probably, but I'm not. So I said, hey man, I need another favor from you. And he was like, anything for you, man, anything. Like he was really like this. I was like, okay, yeah, great. Um, I'm married. Uh, so <laughs> he, uh, I said, hey man, I need to also plug into your wireless microphone receiver. Most DJs have a wireless mic receiver that they're gonna be using to work with their microphones. It's a, it's a rare DJ that's still using wired mics, let's be honest here, but it still happens. But most of them are using wireless mics, and so the wireless mic will have a wireless receiver box. I do not have one of those boxes, but it's approximately this size. It has antennas sticking out of it. And on the back of that box, there are gonna be two outputs. One output is gonna be an XLR output, and the DJ will most likely be using that to get his audio into his soundboard. But 90% of the time, there is another output on the back of that, a quarter inch output. And the DJ rarely, if ever, uses that. So if you can plug into that using a quarter inch, two quarter inch cable, you are going to get flawless, unadulterated, pristine audio directly from the microphone without going through processing, echoes, music that the DJ could be playing, anything like that. It is gonna be a pure signal coming right into your audio recorder. And the Zoom can record up to like four channels of audio, well two with this thing. So I had one channel recording the, XL, uh, the RCA output from the soundboard. I had the other channel recording the pure output directly from the wireless microphone. So I was pretty darn set, but I'm clearly insane because I wasn't done yet. So how can we bolster this? How can we add a layer of backup for this audio? Well, you could just break out your lav mics, your DR10Ls, and just start miking every single person that's giving a toast, but that can get kind of annoying, and then you gotta like stop and like, hold on, don't talk yet, and it gets weird. So, to avoid that, what I have purchased is the DM620, which I've already talked about, and more importantly, this little guy. This is a microphone sleeve. It's far more glamorous than it looks, okay? Benefits of this thing. I said, hey, Mr. DJ, again. And he's like, of course, whatever. I said, hey, I need to put this microphone sleeve onto your microphone. And he's like, whatever, man, whatever you wanna do. Most DJs are cool with this, especially once you explain it. So example, pretend this microphone's a wireless microphone. Take the mic sleeve, slide over the microphone. Take the DM620 voice recorder, slide it down into the mic sleeve. So now, this is your backup. It is a little bulky, a little cumbersome, but not bad. Nobody's ever complained about it. Make sure you set it to hold. So if they're like pressing the buttons on it, then they can mess it up. But this is now your backup audio source. Completely untouched by the DJ. This is completely yours. And people are gonna be holding this thing up close to their mouth talking. So it's right there. And you're gonna get good audio. This has saved my butt so many times at weddings where I was not able to get into the soundboard where it was just in the middle of nowhere and you're like, how is there even sound out here? This thing saved my life. So, highly recommend purchasing this. It's a My Mic Effects microphone sleeve. It's like 10 bucks. Incredible. Example time. This is from a wedding that I shot two years ago about and the reception and the ceremony occurred at the bride's family ranch. This is Texas, we have a lot of ranch weddings. They got married out, they just, put, they just had a big tent out in the pasture with the cows and they had the reception underneath it. So the dance floor, the DJ had set up his speakers right by the dance floor, but the DJ had been kind of relegated to this far off corner. So I do not think that his wireless audio was recording as well, as, was working as well as it should have been, but I still did my thing. I plugged in my Zoom H4n into the house audio to make sure I was recording that. And this is what I ended up with. And I've known um, Richard since middle school, um, but I won't go into any of that. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I've known y'all for a long time. And I just wanna take the time, uh, time right now to say how much um, I'm looking forward to supporting y'all in the future. And how many times does that happen to one of you guys? And you're just looking in horror like, no, like, sucks. So, if you look here, and her little still here, you'll notice that I had my mic sleeve on, and I had my recorder in it. So, 
This is my audio from the mic sleeve recorder. And I've known um, Richard since middle school, um, but I won't go into any of that. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I've known y'all for a long time. And I just want to take the time, uh, time right now to say how much um, I'm looking forward to supporting y'all in the future and seeing y'all grow together. Yes, saved it. Because that audio cutting out didn't just happen for this toast. That happened for the next toast after that as well. So by having that, yes, there's a little bit of echo, but still completely usable. I was able to salvage that toast. I was able to use that toast in the wedding film. So backups, 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 redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. I'm gonna just keep on yelling that at you guys until you vaguely understand. And you're just like, okay, great, fine. We'll buy it. Completely worth it. Last thing we need to talk about here. We're almost done. If you are shooting a wedding that is very small, say that they're like, hey, there's only 10 people, we don't even have a sound system, we don't have a DJ, how do you record that audio? Or maybe you're filming a rehearsal dinner that's at some restaurant, they don't have a mic system set up, and you're like, okay, do I just start laughing people? What am I gonna do to make sure I can record this audio? Well, I have good news for you. Oh, this is the setup that will save you. This is the, I gotta read this off here, the Electro Voice RE50N slash D dash B. I do not know why they call it that. It's a horrible name for a microphone, but incredible microphone. Love it. Standard XLR microphone. And this is the Tascam DR10X voice recorder. Anytime you add X to a product name, it's instantly cooler. Just how it happens. The Tesla Model X, you're like, ooh, all right, cool. DR10X. X actually standing for XLR because it has an XLR input built into the top of it. So you get all the benefits of the other Tascam DR10Ls, the auto leveling, the mic backup, the backups, everything. But you can take it, plug it right here into your microphone, and now you have a fully mobile wireless news reporting style setup. Of course, get your mic sleeve. Of course, get your DM620. Put it on here too as backup, just why not? Nobody's gonna care. This goes well onto a mic stand that you can then put at the wedding reception and, or at the rehearsal dinner or something like that. Bring your own mic stand, put it on there. People stand up there. The only complaint and issue that you will have is you're gonna get a lot of old people coming up to give toast and they're like, is the thing on? I can't hear, why can't I hear myself? And you're like, it's for the video. And you will just get, you will get go hoarse from just yelling at them, it's for the video. It's for the video, it's for the video. And you're just gonna be like, the video, let's just keep doing it. They will not understand, they will keep yelling, and they'll be like, well, I don't need this. And you're like, take the microphone. Like, you just, just keep it going. If you have people that want to walk around, gaff tape it to your mic stand. I'm just telling you, you can do it. You can be that guy, and it's awesome. Or girl, Mary's not at me. She's like, yes, gaff tape, gaff tape, everything. So good, okay, so I hope that this talk has inspired you to use more microphones. I hope that you want to be like Oprah. That's my goal, I want us all to be like Oprah. I just like saying Oprah, it's so great, oh man. Okay, so, last thing here then. My YouTube channel, wanna hit 200K, help me out here. Most importantly though, the kit page, which is where I have all of the audio gear that I've just talked about listed. So if you're confused about any of this sort of stuff, it's on the kit page, kit.com slash who is Matt. There's an audio gear for wedding filmmakers title. You can go to that, look at any of the stuff that you want to see. Lastly, there's Instagram. I'm trying to hit 10,000 so I can start posting links in my stories. That's a big deal. Almost there. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. It's been a lot of fun. Okay, he's asking if I, whenever I mic people during the ceremony, do I prefer micing them behind the tie or just on top of the jacket? Normally, I would say just on top of the jacket if I know that there's not gonna be any sort of wind interference if it's an indoor ceremony because you're gonna get clearer audio. You're gonna get the highs. If you bury it underneath the tie, you're gonna lose a lot of the highs. It's gonna be a lot like more muffled and deep. And you can bring that out in audio processing, but having it cleaner from the start will be easier. Yes, we'll just go this way. So sorry if I missed it at the beginning, but um, <laughs> what are those mics connected to? Is it connected to a recorder on their person or is it transmitting? It is not transmitting. Yeah, Hate transmitting. Don't use wireless. Don't, people that raved your hand, don't use wireless anymore. Yeah, all of them are recording to either recorder, 
recorder, recorder, everything is going to be recorded yeah. independently, just a micro SD cards they're, on them. They're wearing it. And exactly, all exactly, and it's wonderful. No cell phones. No, I'm just kidding here. Okay, we'll go over here. What's up? They have a problem like when you put the um, uh, microphones underneath. It, there's a screeching like for the cloth or oh, something. Oh yeah, the scratching. Okay, okay. So if you end up with like any sort of scratching, usually. If I am putting it underneath normally, I will just put it just barely underneath the jacket so it's like just right here. Benefits of that is that that's going to minimize a lot of the scratching because the jacket, unless it's like super form fitting, isn't gonna be touching the inner shirt. If you are worried about scratching more so, Rycoat, who makes the stickies here, make a thing called an overcover which goes over the top of the microphone as well. So it goes, you're gonna have your sticky underneath the mic and you have the overcover over the microphone. That's gonna block wind noise, of course, but it also helps minimize rustling because then stuff is not brushing up directly against the microphone. Next. Uh, what's your setup and scenario if you're not allowed to mic efficient or plug into a house? What do you do in that? Ooh, see, this is something, this comes down to the initial meeting with the couple and all of that prep ahead of time. So I'm first meeting with a couple. Hey, who's your efficient? Hey, what sort of audio system are you using? Hey, tell your efficient we want to put a mic on them. So we're putting that bug in the air way ahead of time. So if the efficient doesn't want to be mic'd, which is rare, but it has happened, then you are going to be getting in touch way ahead of time and ideally trying to cut that off. Like, hey, no, we really need this audio. And so you're getting the bride on his back or her back. You're getting the just every single person you can get like harassing them about putting audio on them until find like fine okay great then that's totally doable but um otherwise i think that you could put a zoom h4n just in front of a speaker i've done that before like as a last ditch effort like just auto level in front of the speaker and that has saved me before that's totally doable also i am not opposed to like completely stealth like putting mics around people like if they're gonna be up at the podium you're like have a good talk Great, like, you know, like, like I, will, I will do whatever I need to do. We're almost to the point, there's this little company called Instamic, and they have these little magnetic microphones. And I've like talked to Rachel about like stealth micing people without their knowledge. Just like, oh, you didn't want that? Okay, sorry, just take it off them after. You know, like, have a good speech. Like, you know, like whatever, do, do what you need to do. But like, I don't know, if you ever watch any of Ray Roman's stuff, he's like, you get what you need to get. Like, you'd be like downright, like he's, he's like ex SWAT team. So he's like that, but like, Seriously, like, just be like, I need this. Don't you tell me no. Like, you want the bride to be upset? Like, you know, start, like, making, don't, don't threaten to, like, kill their family, but, like, you know, make, like, as many threats as you need to make to, like, make it happen. Okay, that's enough about that. I'm saying inappropriate things now. Yeah. Uh, room tone? Room tone? Not as much of an issue for wedding films, usually, because usually you're putting music over things anyways. So, room tone is not a huge issue because I, I rarely am concerned about room tone. The other plus is that all of these recorders I have going about 15 minutes before the ceremony. So there's a pretty good chance at some point there's gonna be some room tone where people are just like, stand still or something like that and you should be okay. Yeah. Okay, so none of those equipments you got there are wires? None of them, none. no. They're all like Tascam? Yeah, Tascam DR10L, all of them record to SD cards or micro SD cards, just internally. And I started with a Sennheiser G3. I, so I was using for wireless, wireless. I had literally one microphone that I was putting on the groom and I'm like, I'm good. That was my first year. Then you start like just having your audio crap out completely and you're like, okay, never again. I'm not going to do that anymore. So yeah. Um, yes. As far as like the settings on your audio recorders, do you put them on auto or? Auto everything. Yeah. Yes. So the DR10Ls are great because they actually let you set how sensitive you want the auto to be. So you can have it set to low, medium, or high sensitivity, and that will tweak it. I have mine set to medium, and that's worked out really, really well for me. Do you monitor at all on, on set or, or on the um, You can monitor the house audio if you wanted to while that's recording at least, but I'm trusting these things just to be going, and I'm the guy who like puts it on, like, turns it on, checks it, puts it on, opens up the jacket later, like looks at it again, like, you know, and then like before the ceremony, if there's time, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Let me just look inside your jacket. Like you're checking it like up to the point. And then you're like, okay, it's done now. I can't, I can't change it. So that helps out a lot. But bring your headphones, plug it in, plug, you can plug into your Zoom H4n that you're recording and you can like be listening to at least the house audio. Like, okay, good, at least that's clear, which that can help you out a lot. I know there was a question, you had a question. Yeah. 
Yes, actually I have. So my go-to would be RCA or quarter inch, especially with the Zoom H4n, because it has decent preamps, so it can record pretty well, but whenever you do XLR, it's very easy to get peaking with this thing because they will just start going higher and higher and higher, and then you'll notice this thing is auto-leveling, and it's leveling it like only recording like at the lowest, it has, a, it has an audio mic sensitivity of one to 100, and it'll be at one, and so it's trying. What they make is this thing called a signal attenuator. It's called a XLR attenuator, so it, I, I could have talked about this, but I don't have one, but that plugs in, it's like a little XLR on one side, XLR on the other side, tiny little port thing. But they make them in different increments that will lower the audio level of your input. So negative 25 decibels, negative 10 decibels, you can put one of those in, then you plug in your cable and that's going to make the audio l softer whenever it's going into the, if you have to use XLR. And that can save you too. Yes? How much do you, if you haven't shot at a venue before, how much do you research it before you go in? Oh, well, use, use I'm looking at airports there because I want to see if I can fly my drone around there anyways. But um, we had a wedding last November that was also right near DFW Airport, but even closer, like a quarter mile from the landing strip. So it's just planes overhead. And we were at the point where we're like, if this is an outdoor wedding, like we haven't, the couple hasn't booked us yet. We might be like, we're sorry, we can't film your wedding. I, we, we'd like to, but like, it's just going to be too bad. Like, I'm just like, I don't want to deal with this. So. Thankfully, um, they got married indoors there, which, which worked out in our favor. But if you have any sort of situation where you can, this is all about research ahead of time too. Meet with a couple, talk to them, ask them these questions. Like, hey, where are you gonna be at? And then you're looking at stuff. As much pre-production as possible, so that way whenever the wedding day comes, nothing surprises you. I want no surprises. I want to know everything, all the secrets. Um, yeah. So how do you go about like Mike and the bride and the if they're doing like a note before the ceremony? Yes. I prefer to use a task cam for something like that because that way you can make sure that you record good audio. The note letter reading is something that I could have touched on too at the beginning. That is the only time that I still actually use my Sennheiser G3 wireless recording because I still do want to monitor that. So if you still have wireless, use it for that situation. You're going to be three feet away from them so you can actually monitor it and listen to it. But the benefit of that is that that way I know that I'm getting good audio of that moment. But otherwise, no. Uh, plugging to the speaker. Say, say what? Doing XLR to the speaker. Um, okay, XLR to the speaker is similar to what um, I was talking about earlier with like you can get very higher, much higher levels coming out because they're sometimes pumping heavy volume into that speaker. And so that's going to end up going right into your recorder and that can result in the audio not being no bueno, as we say in Texas. Um, yes? Uh, how long after the wedding do you finish and deliver the overall product? Yeah. Um, so we, we kind of have the philosophy now of when it's done, it's done. Longest delivery time ever was about eight months, but right now we're at about three months. We've gotten that down a lot and all. Um, I'm a big, big fan of just communicating with the couple. People will forgive you for years, as long as you tell them, I have not stolen your money, I have not forgotten about you, you are still getting a wedding film at some point. Because I have friends of mine, I've, my friend, one of my friends, I'm not gonna say his name because he'll get mad at me. <laughs> he was like, man, this couple's so mad at me, dude. And I'm like, why? He's like, man, they keep asking for their wedding film and I just haven't replied to their emails. I'm like, just, <laughs> just be like, hey, yeah, don't worry about it. So like every month or so, we're sending an email to the couple saying, hey, still working on your wedding film. Don't worry, it'll be done soon. Please don't hate us, you know? And so like by doing that, that also like helps them be reassured. Other thing that we're doing too, we started delivering Instagram trailers. So we'll do like a, within three weeks of the wedding, we'll deliver a one minute Instagram trailer. And that's kind of a proof of, we did record something at your wedding. It was good, get hyped about it. Now please just watch that on repeat for the next few months until we actually finish your full film. Thank you. So that, that can save you too. Is that it? Oh, uh, yeah. How much do you charge? We are starting, what are we starting at? Rachel knows. We're starting at 5,000 now, 50, 5,000 for local. Um, we're charging if you're, you want to get married in, the, if you have a destination wedding in New Jersey or something, which I understand that that doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if I was to do that, then we would have, we have inside the United States, States $1,500, $1,700 extra. Like Cause we have to pay for flights, hotel, rental car, right. stuff like that. And then if they're getting married internationally, that is a custom quote that we got to figure out cause Big difference if you're going to get married in China versus if you're getting married in like the Caribbean for us or something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so it's really easy to practice the video part. How would you recommend practicing the audio part as far as like ceremony and reception? Yeah, yeah. Well, the good news for you is that it, all these things just, they're going to work the same regardless of where you're at. So like, mic yourself, I don't know, like, you know, you're just like, hey, okay, we're going to test this stuff out here and just see how it sounds. Like, I'm always testing stuff ahead of time. I'm always renting things. I'm always trying out things ahead of time. And don't go out and purchase all this stuff. Don't, don't buy all this stuff and use it all at once. Like, you're just going to be overwhelmed. Like, I've, like, bought one thing at a time as I go, like, okay, I need this. I need this. And that, that'll help out a lot. Or just buy it all. Whatever. Do it. <laughs> it's fine. We've already been on the site as I'm talking, like, purchase, purchase. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally, totally. So one of the big things that we do is we're only showing weddings on our website that have that awesome audio element. So that wedding that I showed you at the start, Henry and Victoria, which was in Colorado, that one's like centered. Out. That's not, that one's big on the site because the weddings that you show on your website are the weddings you're going to book more of. So if you want to book more outdoor weddings, show more outdoor weddings on your website. If you want to show more audio-based weddings, show more audio weddings on your website. It just, what, what you post is what you will get. So, post more of that. Do you do different pricing and indoor and outdoor? Um, Matt, make sure you repeat your question. Sorry, do you do different pricing for indoor or outdoor? Um, no, we do not. It's same flat rate regardless. We're not like, oh man, indoors, all right, you gotta charge more. No, no, it's, it's all the same. What's your go-to audio equipment? My go-to audio equipment? Yeah, like if I were to go and I said, okay, I want to purchase, I have enough to purchase one. One? Okay. One? Easy. DR10L. Tascam DR10L. Buy what? $200 each. Buy like, buy two, buy, buy, buy a lot. Like those things, they're incredibly versatile and you can use them on most people. They, they could replace a lot of this stuff in different situations if you needed them to, if you were just starting out. Yeah? Uh, what kind of crew do you normally go out with? My wife, Rachel. What kind of crew do I normally go out with? My wife, Rachel. And she keeps me fed and happy. She's the best ever. Everybody, everybody needs a Rachel. Yeah, she's really great. Just two shooters. Just two shooters, though, yeah. How many, uh, or like what percentage of your clients are like, just making an awesome wedding video, I don't care about photography, just you got control of the entire day? Um, that's okay. What kind of, what percentage of our clients are, we don't care about photo. We just want video. Um, every single wedding that we've ever shot has also had a photographer there. So we're always reaching out to the photographer ahead of time, getting to know them, talking to them. What has started happening more recently is we've been having couples that are like, oh, we don't really care about our photographer. We love you. And I'm like, great. Thank you. That is more pressure on me then. Awesome. So I'm always encouraging them like, you sure you want that photographer then? Like you could get a different one and then that's okay. But, um, we're always in interacting with a photographer. I have a video on my YouTube channel, like how wedding filmmakers can get along with photographers, and that breaks it down. But that is very important to us. But we would rather have a photographer. Than we would. We would rather there be a photographer there, just for the formal stuff, definitely. Okay, um, how many photographers did, or how many videographers did we have during the Iceland wedding and am I monitoring the audio from the H4N? Two videographers for the Iceland wedding because plane tickets to Iceland are expensive and I had 10 people text me before we left saying, can I come help you? And I said, no, but that could have been an option. But prefer traveling light, prefer packing light, prefer just getting there. You can monitor the audio from the Zoom H4N it has a headphone input, so you can just plug in some, it's got like some Apple headphones or something. Just, just, just so you, it's not about the audio quality at that point. It's more so, is this actually recording audio? Period. Okay, good. I have something. Great. You're set. Okay. Yeah. So for the Iceland wedding that you had, you had the groom with the lab mic. Why could you not put that underneath his jacket to avoid the wind? Let's see here. So for the Iceland wedding here, we had a lot of recorders happening at that wedding. So I had not only the Tascam DR10L on his lapel, I had the Olympus under his jacket as well 
for that ceremony. It's just, it's a little bit easier, you can. So like for the bride, if you take off the clip here, we just had this under, but this microphone here is much bigger than the matchstick microphone here. So size difference there, that helps out a lot. Yeah, the question was how many did, did we mic the, I'm talking about YouTube channel, dang it. No, it's good, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, say the question again, what was it again? What was it, what was your question again? It was the, could I put the lav mic underneath the jacket for the groom? And just talk about all the wedding. Then. Who'd you have mics on? Who'd have mics on at the wedding? Okay, for the Iceland wedding, I had a. This this wedding was also a logistical nightmare because they had two officiants. You can see that there are two people standing up there. So, not only did I have to put a Zoom or a Tascam dr 10 l on the groom, I put an Olympus DM620 on him under his jacket to prevent the wind. We had a Tascam dr 10 l on the bride. We also had a Tascam dr 10 l and a Olympus DM620 on both efficients. So I had seven sources of audio, and there was no house audio. I don't know if you're aware, but this is the Glacier Lagoon. There's not a soundboard there. Yeah, we had a soundboard, like speakers and all. No, they did have like a Bluetooth speaker that they were playing. What did they, what did they play? It was like a, uh, they played some song when she walked up. But yeah, they played 10,000 years. Okay, that's what, that's what you do. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Time, but this was yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> if, if you have any other questions, whoismat.com is my website. Shoot me an email on there. I'll get back to you if you want more in-depth answers or something like that. I'm around. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions about this, shoot me an email at my website, whoismat.com. See you guys soon. Bye.